hello students welcome to this new lecture of the new chapter okay so now in this new uh, in this new chapter we are going to start the new lesson that is heat okay it is the fifth chapter we are going to start now okay now before we go through this chapter it is necessary to know few important concept that we have already learned okay so we will make simply it's a revision so before uh, we go through the chapter we will learn the concept like heat transfer okay now we have learned the different types of heat transfer like a conduction a radiation and the convection okay these are the three basic types of heat transfer through which heat can be transferred from one place to the other place okay so these are the modes of heat transfer we have seen with the three ways that is conduction convection and the radiation okay how the behavior of molecule was there whether the molecule were involved in that process uh, for example you can see the conduction so there was the molecules were come in contact with each other so that's why they could able to transfer the heat from one place to the other place while the convection there is also there is also uh, no need of uh, molecules to transfer the heat okay so uh, very rarely it can be transferred through the convection now as far as the radiation is concerned so radiation it will be directly uh, radiation uh, heat will be transferred with the help of radiations from the one place to the other place okay so radiation is the process which have which will be there if the distance is far from the source and the object then even it was possible to transfer the heat from one place to the other place okay so these were the three modes of the heat transfer now up to that we have learned about expansion and contraction of gases liquids and solids okay so this is the first concept it, which is clear now now we have seen the expansion and contraction of the uh, gases solids and liquid okay so suppose if we take the example of solids okay now we have learned about the solids that we have performed one experiment okay there was one there was one circle of, of the strand and we have to heat the iron ball okay when you heat that iron ball so it will get expand okay when you heat it it will get expand and before we heating that ball that ball was able to pass through that hole okay and after heating uh, when you uh, tends to pass that ball through that hole then it will not pass because after heating that iron ball will increased okay so like this uh, experiment we have performed uh, on the basis of expansion and contraction of the solid liquids and the gases okay so when you uh, look afterward for the uh, liquids so when the liquids will get heated so there is phase transformation so up to which uh, there is transformation of liquid into gases and again the gases or the steam may be get converted into the liquid so which is the temperature deals with that particular phenomenon with the deals with the water that's all the concept we have learned in the previous standard okay now and after that we have learned about the uh, solids liquids and gases also okay when the gases will be heating so it will be expanded okay while heating the gases will expand and while cooling or it will get contracted while cooling it will get contracted so these were the few important property regarding the solid liquids and gases on the basis of expansion and contraction okay so this is the second part also we have learned now after that a few important concepts dealing with the heat we have to learn that is latent heat phase transformation okay latent heat and the phase transformation now a latent heat means it is the uh, amount of temperature that is possessed by the unique mass to conversion of liquid into the liquid into the solid or solid into the liquid or the liquid into the gases okay these are the types of latent heat we are going to learn and what types of temperature that it will vary that the phase changes will occur so this all the things we have we are going to learn in this chapter okay after that the anomalous behavior of the water uh, and we have already learned about the hopes apparatus also okay so the hopes apparatus there is also a hopes apparatus is there we are going to learn in this uh, chapter okay how it works and uh, where was the arrangement to adjust the thermometers 
and what is the zero degree temperature and the four degree temperature okay these all the thing we will learn in this chapter and after that we have learn about dew point temperature and the humidity okay so deep dew point temperature is that temperature at which the uh, liquid is convert start to convert into the uh, that the liquid will start to convert into the vapors okay that temperature is called as a dew point temperature okay now that is after that we have seen the humidity that is the amount of moisture or the amount of liquid plus gases present in the atmosphere or in the air is called as a humidity okay so these all the important concept which we are necessary to learn while while we are going uh, through the heat chapter so we have just revised in a sim simple time of impact okay now we will start our chapter so first point we have to take is latent heat the first time we have to learn is latent heat so uh, why we are going to learn about the latent heat if there is one experiment we have to perform okay so i will draw the diagram so you will understand very easily so this is the stand This is the eyes, and after that, this is the thermometer we have to use. This is the thermometer. We have dipped it into the ice. That is the ice into the. Uh, that is the beaker. Okay. After that, this is thermometer. Thermometer. That is ice. And after that. This is burner and rest of things you know very well. This is stand. Okay, so to understand the phenomenon of latent heat, we have to perform one experiment over here. Okay, so as you can see, there is the arrangement of as there is stand you can see here this is the stand to which on the stand there is burner is situated okay which is allowed to heat the there is one beaker is there there is one beaker is there on that beaker there is uh, ice cubes are there you can see here ice cubes are connected into that beaker and exactly in the same beaker there is the uh, there is a thermometer is allowed to uh, deep or the uh, sink into that beaker which is uh, which is of the uh, ice cube okay there is one uh, thermometer is allowed to pour allowed to deep into that 
conical uh, or the uh, beaker okay so measure the how much temperature at the particular impact of time is there for that purpose you can see the thermometer is there and the ice cubes burner and this is the stand so these are the arrangement we have to do here okay so what will happen what will happen first of all suppose we just start that heating now right now we just start heating this mixture or heating this ice cubes then what will happen this ice cubes will start gaining the heat the molecules of that ice cube will start gaining the heat so the bonds of that ice the bonds with which the ice has been formed that bonds will start becoming beacons okay the bonds will start becoming beacons so as we will keep heating the temperature or the heat will be gained by this ice cubes okay and then as the heat will gain gaining by the ice cubes the bond between those ice cubes will be beacons it will goes on breaking that's why as we we will goes on heating so at the temperature of at the temperature of 0 degree celsius up to the temperature of 0 degree celsius it will uh, it will just uh, start con it will just uh, it will just remains is the temperature okay the, uh, it will it will remains at the state of ice up to the 0 degree celsius okay when we start heating up to the 0 degree celsius it will it will just be continues it in its state of the ice cubes okay and when when after the 0 degree celsius will exceed the temperature means of 1 degree celsius 2 degree celsius 3 degree celsius and more than it then what will happen that ice will goes on converting into the water okay at that temperature after the 0 degree celsius that i that ice will starts convert into the water okay so this is what the changes will happen and uh, after after when the ice will convert into water so after the 1 degree 2 degree 3 degree as the temperature as the range of temperature will goes on increasing the temperature of that water which is converted from the ice cube will also goes on increasing okay as the water the increase in its in its temperature there will be again that water will be gaining the energy so the bonds between that H2O molecules will will also goes on beacons okay the bonds between the H2O molecules will also goes on beacons that's why as the again temperature will goes on increasing say 50 degrees celsius 60 70 80 and say finally you can say up to the 100 degrees celsius 100 degrees celsius the state of water will be continuous 100 degrees celsius the state of the water will be continuous in its a liquid state okay once the water will reach the 100 degrees celsius and if we as a start heating okay if we as a start heating it will it will be in the liquid state at the 100 degrees celsius but as after the 100 degrees celsius 1 degree will be added so again the water will be get converted converted into the a uh, gas state okay now the water will get converting into the uh, that is the vapor or you can say in the steam form okay so these are the uh, th these were the basic changes that will happen by converting into the ice into the water and water into the steam okay and again when you just uh, co uh, collect that steam and it will just, uh, if you just put it for the freezing then again it is possible to convert it convert it into the ice cube okay so these are the phase changes will occur through this experiment okay let me explain one more time this is the uh, arrangement of the experiment so in this experiment we have heating to the ice cube okay in this type of arrangement so when we heating the ice cube so when we when the temperature will goes on increasing that ice cube will gain the energy and that's why due to this gain of energy so internal energy so there will be the beacons the bond will be there bonds will become beacons okay and after that when the bond will become beacon so there will be the phase changes will be there that the ice will be converting into the water at the 0 degree celsius when the uh, when it was in the ice so it was below the 0 degree celsius 
and when the temperature will be reached to the zero degree Celsius, so now the ice cube has been converted into the water form. So again, we just start heating after one degree, two degree, fifty, sixty, seventy. The state of the water will remain same, and after hundred degree Celsius, so and uh, that water will again converting into the steam or vapor. Okay, so that will be. Uh, phase changes will be there at zero degree Celsius and at the hundred degree Celsius. At the zero degree Celsius, uh, ice to liquid state will be there, and at hundred degree Celsius, liquid to vapor state will be there. Okay, so this is what we have to learn in the phenomenon of latent heat. Okay, now as far as the latent heat is concerned, so there is one graph through which we can understand. There is one graph. Through which we can understand these changes. Okay, now simply we will learn. We will draw the graph. So this is what we have learned about the experimental view or the experimental concept of the latent heat. Okay, now we will understand the same concept with the help of this graph. That is the temperature against the time. Okay, the graph is temperature against the time. Okay. So this is what uh, we have to plot the graph. There is x-axis and y-axis. So on the x-axis there is time. On the y-axis there is temperature in the degree Celsius. Okay. So the unit we have taken one centimeter. One centimeter is equal to two minutes. We have taken on the x-axis. While on the y-axis one centimeter is equal to ten units. This is why we have taken here. Now we can see here. This is the zero point. This is the zero point. Okay. Now we can explain very uh, efficiently with the help of graph. There are points A to B are the points. Okay. Means this is the temperature. This is the temperature we can see. So the A to B, the time has goes on increasing, but the temperature has remained same. You can see here. You can see here. The time has goes on increasing, but the temperature has remained same. Okay, I will I will tell you one more time. Here, the time has goes on increasing, but the temperature has remained same. You can see here that is the zero degree same temperature has remained same. Okay, and or the continues to be a zero degree Celsius up to the four up to the four minutes. Okay, up to the four minutes you can see here. This is the point A to B. This is the point A to B, and at this, the state of the water will be ice plus water. Okay, ice plus water will be there. At the zero degree Celsius, there will be the ice plus water. That is the initial mixture of ice plus water. As we have taken, it has remained as it is. Okay, at the zero degree Celsius. This is the point A to B. This is what it indicates. Now, now after that, when After the four uh, minutes, the time has also goes on increasing. Okay, which is indicated B to C, which is indicated B to C. Now, at this stage, you can see the time required to heat that temperature. You can see here twenty to twenty twenty two minutes required. Okay, twenty to twenty two minutes. Okay. Now, after that, the temperature has also increased. You can see here the temperature has goes on increasing and reaches to the 100 degree Celsius. The temperature has goes on increasing and reaches to the 100 degree Celsius. You can see, and during just within the 100 degree Celsius, the state of the water is water plus liquid. The state of the water that is the liquid state, which is the water. Okay, so just before the 100 degree Celsius, the state of that mixture initially that mixture was ice plus water in that beaker. Okay, now after The after heating after goes on heating up to the twenty thirty four fifty sixty seventy up to the hundred degree Celsius the state of the water has become uh, liquid. Okay, that ice has entire ice has converted into the liquid now. Now after that once the it it has attained the hundred degree Celsius then again again the temperature has remained constant. That 100 degree te Celsius temperature has remained constant. You can see here, and the time has goes on increasing. So at this stage, the liquid plus gaseous state will be there. There will be some amount of liquid will be remain into that 
beaker and the gases forms will be also there means that some amount of liquid will be get converted into the gases form that is in the steam or in the vapor okay so this is what we have learned and that will be the boiling of water and vapor there will be boiling and water and vapor so one more time i will explain in a very short impact of time at first 0 degree celsius the there was the mixture of ice and water into the beaker and after that when the time will goes on increasing and the temperature will remain constant the temperature was just minus in the minus 3 degree celsius and at the 0 0 degree celsius there will be the water ice plus water will be there okay when the when you start heating continuously with respect to the time so the entire ice will be converted into the liquid that is into the water okay now we have start heating we have heated that uh, water up to the 100 degree celsius so 100 degree celsius is the point where the water will start to becomes convert into the uh, convert into the vapor okay so there will be the gain of energy by that water and the bonds will be get weakens and that's why there will be the water will be get converting into the uh, vapor okay then these are the point uh, this is point b to c b to c and after the point uh, c there will be cd means the temperature has maintained we have constantly that is 100 degree celsius against the water will be gaining the energy and the bonds between h2o okay hydrogen to hydrogen molecules and the one oxygen molecules there will be bond will be goes on beacons and that's why c to d will be there and again there will be the total conversion of water into the vapor will be there so this is how there will be the boiling of water plus vapor will be there so this is how we have seen the behave the latent heat okay now as per the definition of latent heat heat is concerned the amount of heat energy required the amount of heat energy required to heat the unit mass to heat the unit mass to convert into the solid into the liquid to convert into the to convert into the solid phase solid to convert into the liquid phase solid to convert into the liquid phase okay what they have given the definition the amount of heat energy absorbed at constant temperature the amount of heat energy absorbed by the unit mass at constant temperature to convert the solid to liquid phase to convert the solid to liquid phase is called as specific latent of fusion is called specific latent of fusion okay now this is what they have explained now as far as the amount now next definition is specific uh, specific latent heat of vaporization now next de definition is specific latent heat of vaporization so it is the amount of heat heat energy absorbed by the uh, liquid the amount of heat energy amount, amount of heat energy absorbed by the unit mass of liquid to convert uh, to convert that liquid into the gaseous state to convert the liquid into the gaseous state so that is nothing but the latent heat of vaporization that is nothing but the latent heat of vaporization so these are the two important definitions of the latent heat of fusion and the latent heat of vaporization which were necessary we have learned with the help of that experiment and that experiment we have represented in the form of graph and this is how we have learned this to a uh, latent heat concept okay now for the different substances they have given the different melting point by boiling points are given okay so uh, we will see for example the copper will be having a uh, boiling uh, melting point 1083 degree celsius and while the uh, boiling point is 2582 degree degree celsius okay and for example silver silver we, we will learn silver having the melting point 962 while the boiling point is 2162 degree celsius okay so these are the few examples that uh, different uh, elements have a different melting points and the boiling points and the specific heat also specific heat of fusion uh, for the copper specific heat of fusion for the copper is 134 and the specific heat of fusion for the silver 
uh, for the gold it is 144 144 okay so these are the few examples of that with that melting point boiling point and the specific heat okay now uh, for today's le lecture this much is sufficient that we have learned few important concepts regarding the heat and it's a basic all about the heat and after that we have learned the heat to uh, definition that is the latent heat of vaporization and the latent heat of uh, fusion and after that we have learned the experiment with the help of experimental setup and we have learned with the help of graph also how the uh, solid state of ice plus water will convert it into liquid at what temperature and that same liquid will be how when it will convert it into the uh, gases that all we have learned with the help of this graph okay which we have plotted time against the uh, temperature okay so student this much is sufficient for today's lecture now the next part of this chapter we will learn in the next lecture till then thank you so much